Hello, Tar Hill Nation. Welcome back to another episode of the UNC Hoops Talk podcast. I am your host, Dan DeWitt, and I am uh, super excited to be here uh, podcasting. A uh, huge week, exciting week for the Tar Heels, uh, for Tar Heel Nation. Um, everybody knows we're ACC champs now, at least ACC regular season champs. Outright won the league by two games, toughest league. We're going to get into that, get into the Duke game, get into the tournament. Uh, but first, uh, I just want to let you guys know, I am going to be at the ACC tournament in Brooklyn um, with, and, and I'm just pumped. I'm super excited. I don't even know what to say, but I, I do need to say I am uh, partnering with New York Life, who is, it's the, it's the 2017 New York Life ACC tournament. I'm partnering with the title sponsor of the tournament. So that's really exciting for me. Um, hopefully it's exciting for you because it, I am going to be bringing some behind the scenes stuff. Um, some exclusive stuff that you won't see from the people that actually cover the team. Um, hopefully give you some expert guidance, some analysis, whatever you want to call it, some breakdowns of the games. Uh, get to, like I said, behind the scenes stuff and covering covering the whole tournament, but covering even more specifically at the Tar Heels. So uh, if you don't follow me on Twitter, uh, YouTube, um, let's see where else will I be putting stuff. The, the podcast, obviously, if you're listening to this, you do, but uh, make sure you subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, sub, you know, follow me on Twitter. Uh, I'm going to be hopefully doing some Periscope live streams, all kinds of stuff, uh, behind the scenes stuff, game stuff, a little bit of everything. So I'm really excited. I hope uh, you guys are excited because I, I'm hopefully going to bring uh, my plan is and the goal is to bring you guys a lot of good content about it. And, and I just want to thank New York Life for the opportunity um, and, and all that good stuff. So like I said, uh, get geared up. I am, I am super pumped about it. And it should be a great time. And hopefully the Heels can raise another banner by bringing home another title uh, from the ACC tournament. But we'll get to that a little bit later. First, we're going to jump into uh, the Duke game and talk a little bit about this. Uh, everybody knows it was Saturday night. Uh, the primetime game, game day was in Chapel Hill for it. Uh, had Andy on. We talked about it last week leading up to the game. Uh, I, I apologize for that audio. I have no idea when we recorded it. I heard a little bit of stack from him. I thought we had it fixed and um, definitely didn't hear it like that when, when we were recording. So I apologize for that. I hope you could make it through. And, and still get everything that Andy brought to that podcast because there was a lot of good stuff in there talking about uh, his Duke Sucks book, uh, talking about the 30 for 30 about Christian Leitner, uh, the good stuff he was, you know, the book signings that he was doing and, and the run and, and all that. And then obviously uh, talking about the games as well. I hope you hope you got all that from that. And also I did want to mention, I, I think we forgot to last week, but his book is sold pretty much anywhere books are sold. Uh, you know, Amazon, obviously. Uh, in bookstores, um, especially if you're from North Carolina, you should be able to find it in a bookstore. But I've seen it, and I, I'm from Tennessee. I don't remember if it was in Tennessee where I saw it, but I saw it several different places. I've seen it in bookstores. So it's all over. Um, you know, pick up a book and then and then tweet at Andy or and let him know that uh, you bought it because he did such a great job on the podcast. But um, did want to apologize for that audio. I don't really know what happened, and hopefully – uh, it's fixed. I know mine was fine there, so we should be good this week. Um, but a, as I bring guests on, hopefully even at the tournament, and that's the, I guess that's the other thing I want to say. I, I know I'm jumping back a little bit here, but at the tournament, I'd love to do a podcast and bring on some of you, several of you, even like post-game podcasts, whether it's Thursday. I don't know. It's, that's a tough one because we play in the middle of the day and a lot of people are at work, but uh, whether it's that one or we do it later at night, talking about the game uh, or after, I mean, hopefully we win Thursday, uh, after Friday night's game, get get some of you on the podcast and talk about it, have kind of a round table, have more than even one guest. I know in the past, I don't think I've ever had more than one guest on, so maybe try something new here. Uh, but if, if you think you're willing uh, or you would like that, uh, hit me up, email, Twitter, DM, whatever, um, like win would be the best time I'd, I'd like to either do thursday right after the game thursday night or after friday's game if we can um, but let me know which one of those would be best for you uh, you'd be if you you know that you'd be willing to 
uh, any of that good stuff. And I, I love to, I'm going to be interviewing fans at the, at the tournament and hopefully, you know, either live stream or maybe we can get a live person on the podcast. Um, but I'd love to bring some of you on maybe that aren't at the tournament as well and just talk about the game and have a, a round table podcast. So let me know if you're into that, uh, if that sounds like a good idea and we will try to get that going. But like I said, into the Duke game, Saturday night, uh, game day there. Uh, you know, we knew we had won the tournament before because Notre Dame had lost, um, but we had a chance. Obviously we don't want to get swept by Duke. Um, and yeah, we take care of business. I mean, you all to watch the game. If you listen to this podcast, I'm going to say that you watch the game. So I'm not going to say too much about the game, I don't think. But it was a lot different than the first game. The first game, I remember saying, like, you know, even though we did end up losing, it was an entertaining game. It was a really good game in that the refs didn't get it too involved where there was just a ton of free throws. And it was breaking up the flow of the game, all that. I remember saying that. Uh, I don't remember exactly how many fouls there were or anything like that. But this one... It was still a really good game. If you watched it, you know, Jay Billis kept saying, oh, this is just a great game. And it was. There was, there was quality basketball being played. But it was not a great flow. Uh, way too many fouls called, I thought, and way too many free throws, especially for them. I mean, Grayson Allen uh, shot four shots, all of them three-pointers, uh, but yet – shot 11 free throws and as a team Duke shot 35 free throws and really down the stretch it was free throws that kind of cost them the game uh, not that they had, they had like the lead but it was back and forth the entire time and then there was a couple of stretches where I think Grayson went one for two then Grayson missed two and then there was somebody else maybe Tatum or something went one for two uh, and those free throws really hurt them uh, they ended up 28 for 35 which is I mean great percentage 80 percent as a team, uh, but here even looking at it, they were 95, 94% in the first half, 16 for 17. I think Jay Billis even said they shot, they made their first 19 out of 20 free throws. They ended up 12 for 18 in the second half, uh, which is 67%. So really that percentage dropped a lot and, and cost them the game. We shot 21 free throws. So they made seven more than what we even shot. Uh, Let's see, as far as fouls, they had 17 fouls called, and then we had 22. So it's not a huge discrepancy. And, and I'm not even saying, obviously, we won yet, but I'm not even trying to blame the refs or anything. I just, the flow of the game was not the same as the first time we played Duke because of all the free throw shot, because of all the fouls called, uh, stuff like that. But um, takeaways from us going forward, not even looking at this game, we have to rebound better. Uh, you know, up until recently, that had been – you know, our thing is how much we killed people on the boards. Free, uh, rebounds was 35 to 31 overall in our favor. Offensive rebounds was 12 to 8 in our favor. So not a huge, and I, I don't have it in front of me, but second chance points, I don't know, you know, what that was in our favor, but I don't know uh, what it is. And so, you know, only four more offensive rebounds of them is not what we've been doing all year. We got to do, we got to do better there. Um, going forward, Justin Jackson, can't have a game like this. He was named the ACC Player of the Year for the ACC. Uh, so congrats to Justin. It's awesome. Well-deserved. Uh, he did end up with 15 points in this game, but uh, took him 17 shots. He was one for seven from three. Obviously, the one, again, you guys watched it, uh, the one three he did make was huge. And then following that, he had a couple of huge assists um, in the stretch that we kind of pulled away. But he's got to play, he's got to shoot better, got to play better. He did have four assists to zero turnovers again. Um, awesome uh, assist to, to air ratio there. Um, but we were led overall Joel Berry. Joel Berry was the story of this game. Uh, 28 points. He was five for five from three in the first half. Didn't shoot any in the second half. Uh, nine for 14 shooting overall. Five from six on the free throw line. Um, Isaiah Hicks was huge in this game. Obviously, we were missing him in the first matchup with Duke. We knew that would be uh, an added benefit to us. 21 points, eight, nine rebounds for Isaiah in his senior night. Shot seven for nine, seven for eight from the free throw line. I remember early in the season when Isaiah was not shooting good from the free throw line. Seven for eight from the free throw line. Um, Kennedy only eight points, but did have eight rebounds as well. And again, that's... Obviously, Isaiah still had 21 points, but uh, you know, inside we still could have done more damage and hopefully even got them 
into more foul trouble uh, than what what we did. Um, and those were the three people, um, Joel Berry, Justin Jackson, and, and Isaiah Hicks are the only ones in double figures for us. And then obviously Kennedy, I just said eight points. Tony Bradley, eight points off the bench, four rebounds. Luke May, another eight points off the bench. Uh, and and that's, let's see, oh, and then we got two from Brandon Robinson. And that's that's it for scores. We had, I've, uh, we can say starters with zero, but uh, Stillman and, and Coker only played a minute as starters. So it's it's not a big deal that they didn't score. Uh, Nate Britt did not score in this one. Theo Pinson did not score in this one. Um, so we still have room for improvement here. And that's, I guess, the good news. We beat Duke, which is a good team, not an elite team like they were supposed to be preseason, but uh, still a very good team, dangerous team. Uh, and we beat them um, not playing our best game. Uh, we may have possibly played better the first game and just obviously been missing Isaiah and and other things not going our way. They hit 13 threes, stuff like that. In this game, they were seven for 19 from three, um, which, yeah, we can handle that. So. Uh, people talk about our depth compared to Duke's depth. They had five people in double figures. We had, again, three. Uh, they had seven people play double-digit minutes, and the fewest being 13. We only had eight people play double-digit minutes, only one more than them, and ours were, our lowest was 15. Uh, and the next, I mean, it's not like we had somebody or two people with, like, you know, eight, nine minutes. Brandon Robinson, 7th Woods, gave us three minutes, um, and that's it besides the guys that played double figures. So. You can't blame it on on uh, depth for them. Uh, you know, injuries, if you say Harry Giles isn't what he was supposed to be, uh, yeah, sure, whatever, but, I mean, that's part of the game. I mean, we haven't played with our entire roster either. We're still missing Kenny Williams. So uh, you can't blame them. Plus all the, you know, they brag about how many McDonald's All-Americans, how many one-and-dones they have. Marquise Bold in there played one minute for them off the bench. He was supposed to be a one-and-done McDonald's All-American, you know, top recruit and I mean either he's not getting it done or coach K just isn't playing him so uh, don't give me the the depth excuse for them and uh, but yeah it, it was a, it was a really good game I just didn't like the flow of it compared to the first one um, obviously you know Barry was huge Hicks Kennedy um, Nate Britt Stillman White and obviously Coker as well but uh, their senior night uh, great speech by Kennedy following for his, his senior night speech. Um, and Kennard, I mean, kept them in the game, ended up with 28. He was the only person over 20 for them, 28 for them. Banked in two shots, one of them being a three in the first half, uh, just getting plain lucky. Uh, and, and I mentioned Brandon Robinson only playing three minutes, but everybody's going to remember those three minutes that he played because he took the elbow from Grayson Allen that got his technical um, as opposed to a flagrant foul, which – he ended up with three, didn't, you know, foul out or even have four fouls. But it, he did go out at one point after he got his third foul. So if that it would have been a flagrant instead of a technical, he would have had another personal foul and he would have been a lot more foul trouble, would have, would have played a lot fewer minutes uh, than what he did. Ended up with, you know, 23 minutes. And everybody kept talking about his ankle and he shouldn't be playing and he was hobbling. I did not see him hobble. The only thing I saw was his head jerk whenever he got touched or dribbled really. But uh, again, I'm not here even to, to discuss the refereeing uh, or even necessarily bash Duke. I mean, it was a good game. Um, it was funny watching uh, Coach K's press conference. And I'd seen this somewhere, I mean, in the past where he just uses amazing, amazing over and over. And it was crazy how many times he said amazing. I don't know, that must be his go-to word. I'm going to watch that in the ACC tournament a little bit closer. I've, I haven't seen a lot of Coach K press conferences. I don't make it. Um, a thing in my life to watch his press conferences. But I remember there was a press conference, you know, last year, a couple years ago, where he just said it over and over and over. And they, you know, they were taking out and counting how many times uh, he said amazing. But he did it again last night. And I, I don't know, maybe that's normal for him because nobody mentioned anything about it. But I was like, don't you have another word in your vocabulary to use? Like, I don't know, just get off the word. But uh, it's, it's his word. It's, you know, it's whatever. Uh, win for us, a big win. Uh, again, we had the conference outright already, but we win it the toughest conference in the country. Uh, as people have been saying all year long, we win it by two games. You know, a W is a W. We'll take it however we can. We finish 
the regular season, uh, 15 and 0 in the Smith Center, um, and yet somehow Roy is not play or coach of the year in the ACC. It goes to um, Passner for Georgia Tech, who ended up with the exact same record that Georgia Tech had in conference last year that got the guy fired uh, and finished 11th in the conference. Um, I get it. He did a good job, did better than expect, expected, but, I mean, he didn't do anything. Like, they had the same record in the ACC last year. I mean, so what that you were picked to do last? I don't get it. So apparently we were picked second. We win the tournament or win the league, uh, regular season league, and um, that's not good enough. We win it by two games even. Uh, that's not good enough. And the guy that finished 11th, we, I mean, that's like, to me, that's like saying, let's give player of the year to Luke May because not much was expected of him, and he's, he's productive. He's giving us really good minutes and, and some good stats. Like, nobody's going to do that. So, uh, But it, was, it is what it is. Roy's not going to care. He's, he's won the league eight times now in, like, the 14 years he's been at North Carolina and only won ACC Coach of the Year twice. Uh, I think um, Coach K maybe has, like, the same thing. Um, you know, probably has deserved a lot more than that. He's only won it, like, twice. Heck, Seth Greenberg has won it twice. Uh, so uh, I guess they're on the same level. Someone should probably hire that guy away from ESPN, if you ask me. Um, but, yeah, that's my two cents on on the Duke-Carolina game. Now, obviously, going ahead to the tournament, the 2017 uh, New York Life ACC Men's Basketball Tournament will start tomorrow. I'm recording this on Monday. Technically, it starts on Tuesday with first-round games. Um, I guess I'll say that I will not be going until Thursday when North Carolina starts. Uh, I get in Wednesday night so that I'm there to cover North Carolina on Thursday. Um, but we do have games starting tomorrow. I'm going to first kind of look at it uh, from North Carolina's view, and, and from there you'll kind of see what I expect to happen. But uh, when I did predict it out, I don't. there's probably going to be upsets. I get that. Um, I, don't, I didn't predict a lot of these. To me, I picked that we're going to play – uh, Syracuse. We play either Syracuse or Miami. They play Wednesday at noon on ESPN. If you want to watch the two teams that we have a chance of playing, but we play. I said play Syracuse just because they'll probably have the, a little bit of a crowd, home crowd advantage over Miami coming from down there, and, and Syracuse being up in New York. Uh, I don't know if that matters as much in this. I mean, it, it matters when you get to a big game, but I don't know that in the second round on a Tuesday at noon, uh, the crowd's going to be that huge of a factor for the eight, nine game, but um, we could see either one of them, either one of them is going to be really tough, uh, especially for, you know, the first, first game or first round for us in the ACC tournament. But uh, we play at noon on ESPN on Thursday. Like I said, winner of Syracuse or Miami. I picked that we're going to play Syracuse. I don't know. It's that's definitely a toss up game. And then we will go on to play uh, the winner of Louisville and then probably Louisville-Duke, whoever wins that. Clemson-North Carolina State play. Probably Clemson will win that one. Uh, Duke should be able to beat them, and then it's between Louisville and Duke. Um, I picked Duke to beat Louisville mainly because I want to be in person and see a Duke-Carolina game. And I don't know if I – hopefully I'll – sometime down there, I want to say once in a lifetime, but not many chances that I get to play see them play Louisville – um, would be a really good game as well uh, against North Carolina. But I, I really want to be in the building and, and in person to watch a Carolina-Duke game, so that's why I picked Duke to win that. And then I, I did pick uh, Florida State, the two seed, to come out of the bottom. It really scares me that Virginia could possibly, uh, but they would be playing their fourth game in four days if they make it to the championship. But I just, again – for my preference, I don't want to be in the building to watch. As much as I want to see a Duke Carolina game in person, I don't want to see a Virginia North Carolina game. So I hope they don't make the championship. Uh, I would. I think Florida State would be a really good one. Notre Dame would probably be a good game, maybe not as entertaining. Uh, but hopefully one of those two teams comes out of the bottom there. I had said if North Carolina doesn't win the championship, I want North Carolina State to, but they'll probably be out before I even get to Brooklyn. So. Uh, not going to say much there. All of the games are on ESPN that we will play anyway. Like I said, we play noon on Thursday, ESPN. Uh, if or should say when we win, we will play Friday at 7. 
and these are all Eastern games. It says ESPN or ESPN2. I'm going to guess that's ESPN. Um, I don't know why it would, would flip-flop. Uh, and then if and when we make the championship, that will be a 9 p.m. Eastern tip on ESPN uh, as well. All of our games should start on time because it will be the first game of each day as far as uh, the ACC tournament goes. Um, and so, yeah, I, I'm really pumped to be going. I'm really pumped to, to be there in person, like I said, to bring you guys a lot of that stuff. Hopefully, you know, highlights during the game, post-game, press conference after the game, podcasts, live streams, you know, whether that's uh, the team running out, warm-ups, um, the starting lineup. And that's why, again, I, I want you guys to let me know what, what you want to see while I'm there. And I will do everything in my power to do that. And then on top of that, all the back, the, the behind the scenes stuff that I can get will be pushed out. And so again, I hope you follow me on Twitter. Um, you should be able to get any, any periscopes that I send there. And, and you can actually turn on notifications just for live streams or just for like periscopes. If I go live on Twitter, um, you could get a notification and not get a notification for every tweet I send out. Um, and YouTube as well. Go to YouTube, put on notifications so that when I put up a video on YouTube, whether it's the post-game conference, an interview, um, you know, hanging out with friends, whatever it is, and if, I should say friends, with fans, uh, other Carolina, although all Carolina fans are really friends, right? You can't meet a bad North Carolina fan or it's really hard to. So uh, if I post something on YouTube, go there, subscribe to my channel, uh, and then click the little bell so that anytime I post to the the YouTube channel, you'll get a notification uh, and you can see it right away. Uh, I think that would be awesome. Um, I think you'd enjoy it. I hope you will. And like I said, I'm really pumped. I did before I leave here. I, I believe I covered everything. And to cover me, or sorry, to follow all that stuff, the links are in the description. So for Periscope, Twitter, YouTube, and even Snapchat, I may throw out some Snapchats on there. Uh, all the description, all the links to those um, are in the description below wherever you're listening or watching this video. So uh, I appreciate the support and I hope we'll bring you stuff that, that you'll really enjoy. And I may actually be doing a Facebook Live to a UNC basketball group as well. Uh, so if you'd like to make sure you're in that group, again, just get a hold of me on Twitter or email or something and I'll get you to the right place, and uh, you can get all the content that I throw out this weekend. Um, and, and again, if you're following me on Twitter, it should be all blasted there as well. Uh, so it should be a good time. Uh, heels are you know, looking good. They, they should be primed for a nice little run here in the ACC tournament and, and head into the NCAA tournament. So uh, that's all I got this week. I'm, I'm super excited to be able to be in Brooklyn for the New York Life ACC tournament uh, to be sending out a bunch of stuff to you guys and uh, just excited for tournament time. I mean, it is March Madness. What more can we ask for? Uh, that's that's what we live for, right, as Tar Heel fans. And, and I am here just to kind of help unite Tar Heel Nation. That's my mission here in this podcast. Uh, if there's stuff you want to talk about, if there's stuff that you want to see, Hit me up on email, unchoopstalk at gmail.com. Twitter is at Altar Hill Dan. Uh, YouTube comments. I'll, I'll get it all. Uh, just let me know, and, and I'll do my best to uh, talk Tar Heel basketball with anyone at any time uh, because I definitely feel like I can do that. But uh, I feel like I've, I've rambled on enough here. You get the idea. I hope you're half as excited as me because that means you're really excited. And uh, – I will see you guys again later this week from Brooklyn. Until then, go Heels.